Much has been heard about the name Wagner lately. It's no news that he is one of the protagonists in the current war in Ukraine, and his designation depends a lot on who points him out. By some, he is categorized as a private military company. By others, a network of mercenaries, or even Putin's own private army. In order to give a better opinion on the matter, it is necessary that we recap everything we need to know about the Wagner Group. Interested? Great, then stay until the end of the video. Before we begin, it would be good to clarify that not much is known for certain about the Wagner Group, given that in their country of origin, Russia, there is a certain media secrecy that even increased with the country's isolation after the invasion of Ukraine. According to some reports, the founder of the Wagner Group would be Dmitry Utkin, an agent of the Special Forces Group of Russia, where he held the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. In fact, it is presumed that the German name Wagner is Utkin's nickname, given that he would be a supporter of the National Socialist ideology, which is reflected in his Waffen SS tattoos. Regardless, Wagner's ideology today is more associated with extreme Russian nationalism, although like all mercenaries, his supporters act more out of economic motivation than ideological. Regardless, the Wagner Group became globally known since 2014 when the first phase of the war in Ukraine in Donbass broke out, more specifically in the Lugansk Oblast, one of the epicenters of the war. At that time, the group had about a thousand members. According to Ukraine, Wagner would have participated in the downing of the Ilyushin Il-76 transport plane. They also would have intervened in the Battle of Debalsovo in the Donetsk Oblast, where they managed to capture the city for the pro-Russian forces. Following this, the Wagner Group would progressively grow to reach 8,000 members in March, 2022, just before the invasion of Ukraine. But before that, it had various interventions abroad that we will see shortly. By 2022, the other key figure in the financing and leadership of the Wagner Group appears, the well-known Yevgeny Prigozhin. This Russian oligarch, nicknamed Putin's chef, started his career as a catering agent who organized dinners and feasts at the Kremlin and events for the Russian president. On numerous occasions, Prigozhin has been seen personally directing the Wagner troops. To this day, Wagner is declared as a terrorist group by three countries, Estonia, Lithuania, and France. For its part, the US government has designated it as a transnational criminal group. In general, Western countries have suspicions about whether Wagner is really a private company and lean towards two hypotheses. The first, that it is fully controlled by the Russian state and that its status as a company is merely a facade to have an irregular army of mercenaries that supports the regular armed forces. The second hypothesis is that Wagner could indeed be independent but that it is under Russian influence, as the Kremlin is its main client. For its part, the Russian government completely denies having any kind of relationship with this group and appeals to the fact that they are Russian nationalist volunteers. So what is said about them would be pure Western propaganda. However, the Wagner Group's interventions abroad seem to be in line with Russia's interests, a world power that seeks to expand its influence around the world so we will see their interventions abroad. After the war in Donbass, the intervention in the Syrian civil war stands out since October 2015, the same year that the regular Russian forces began their intervention in the country in favor of the al-Assad government, a close ally of Putin. Wagner would have supported in the training of the forces loyal to the Syrian government, something that has not been confirmed by the Russian government, of course. However, in March 2017, 36 Russian soldiers were found who did not carry documents or a flag, so they are associated with this group. It is estimated that about 2,500 mercenaries would have participated in Syria, who had a significant intervention in Palmyra against the Islamic State and in Aleppo, where they dedicated themselves to protecting oil facilities. 
In Sudan, the Wagner Group would have been present since 2017 when Putin tightened ties with then-President Omar al-Bashir. Since then, it has been recorded that the Russian companies Mero Gold and M Investment, the latter controlled by Prigozhin, are largely exploiting the various gold mines in the country, and that several miners died at the hands of the mercenaries. Despite this, al-Bashir fell after the coup at the end of 2018, beginning the period known as the transition to democracy, which has resulted in a new fiasco after the president and vice president of the country started a third civil war since April 2023. Here, Wagner positioned itself on the side of Vice President Mohamed Hamdan Degalo's rapid support forces by providing them with ground-to-air missiles. Libya is a failed state that after the fall of Gaddafi found a new era of chaos that ended in a new civil war between 2014 and here. Wagner positioned itself on the side of Vice President Mohamed Hamdan Degalo's rapid support forces by providing them with ground-to-air missiles. Libya is a failed state that after the fall of Gaddafi found a new era of chaos that ended in a new civil war between 2014 and 2020 between two main factions, the Government of National Accord based in Tripoli and the House of Representatives based in Tobruk. Between two main factions, the Government of National Accord based in Tripoli and the House of Representatives based in Tobruk. Russia and consequently Wagner would support this second faction, whose armed forces were commanded by General Khalifa Haftar. Reports suggest that Russian mercenaries from Wagner supported Haftar's forces by providing them with artillery and snipers, and placing mines and explosive devices. It is even said that they established a base in the city of Esbia. For its part, the US government even accused the Russian mercenaries of shooting down a drone over Tripoli. Likewise, the mercenaries would have protected oil and gas facilities in support of the Torok government. The Central African Republic, for its part, is another failed state immersed in an intermittent civil war since 2012, where the central government faces the coalition of patriots for change. Initially, Wagner deployed its personnel to protect certain lucrative mines, as well as President Faustin Arsen Tuadea. By May 2018, it was estimated that the Russian mercenaries numbered around 1,400 here, Certain abuses by Wagner towards the civilian population have been reported, highlighting their bad reputation for being extremely violent. By January 2023, the mercenaries had suffered heavy casualties during a military offensive near the triple border between Central Africa, Cameroon, and Chad. Reuters agency reported the presence of Wagner members in Venezuela during the presidential crisis triggered by the proclamation of Juan Guaido as interim president. Chavista Venezuela has been a faithful ally of the Kremlin in South America, even recognizing Russia's annexation of Crimea in 2014 before the UN. The presence of the mercenaries would have served as support to provide security for Maduro and his leadership, as well as to provide training to the Bolivarian armed forces supporting the government. And of course, the Wagners would also have the mission of safeguarding the infrastructure of some Russian companies in Venezuela, such as the oil company Rosneft. In addition to those mentioned, other alleged interventions in Africa, such as in Zimbabwe, Guinea, Guinea-Bissau, Angola, Democratic Republic of the Congo, and Madagascar also stand out. In Mozambique, Wagner supported the National Army in fighting against a group of jihadist insurgents along the border with Tanzania. In Mali, he also intervened in the fight against the jihadists operating in the country after France's withdrawal. But we couldn't close today's video without mentioning the most important of all Wagner's interventions, none other than the current Russian invasion of Ukraine. This last war, which is a direct aggression by Russia, has led to a tremendous growth of the Wagner Group, which went from having 8,000 members in April 2022 to more than 50,000 in December of the same year. Recruitment has not only been through advertising like in these posters, but also to prisoners who were offered freedom in exchange for fighting in this war. Wagner would have participated in the failed Kyiv offensive. According to the Ukrainian government, some mercenaries would have tried to assassinate President Zelensky. On the Eastern Front, where Russia is gaining more victories, they would have supported the capture of Popozna and Lysychansk.
They also participated in the Battle of Soledad, a city that Russian forces captured in January 2003. But the most important front, which was led by Prigozhin himself, was the famous Battle of Bayamut, a city in the Donetsk Oblast. Some consider this a Pyrrhic victory, due to the large number of mercenaries who perished, to the point that Prigozhin made this video viral where he criticized the actions of the Russian government for not sending enough weapons. And of course, we couldn't close this video without the latest events. An insurrection by Prigozhin in response to an alleged attack by the regular Russian army on one of his camps. In retaliation, Wagner crossed the border into Russia and took the city of Rostov-on-Don with the aim of heading towards the capital Moscow and overthrowing, according to him, the corrupt elite that leads Russia and has used the war for the benefit of its oligarchs. Putin responded by calling this rebellion a betrayal of the homeland and that the members of Wagner will be punished exemplarily. However, this dispute lasted only 24 hours with the mediation of Belarus. Grigosin and his men withdrew to this country and supposedly will not be prosecuted by the Russian government, which has raised many questions about this sudden change. What do you think is really happening? As you see, the Wagner Group appears to be a private company, but it has acted very much in line with the interests of crime. And I know that Putin's supporters will say, why don't I talk about Blackwater, even though I've already done this show about it. And I, as a good communicator, will continue to report impartially so that everyone can draw their own conclusions. How would you rate the Wagner Group? Don't forget to leave your comment and subscribe to the channel. Also, I leave in the description my social networks, and in case you want to see the new videos in pre-release and have a greater interaction with me, your donations on Patreon, unamanito.net, or channel members are welcome. See you next time.